Unseen 64 Between 2003 and 2011, the UK based studio THQ Digital Warrington, aka Juice Games, prototyped a number of game concepts, many of which were unfortunately cancelled before they were able to reach the market. A few weeks ago, I was looking into one such cancelled title called Split Shift Racing, which you can read about on the Unseen 64 website by following the links in the description below. During my research for Split Shift Racing, I stumbled across another prototype, Project Foob. I tried reaching out to some of the developers working at the studio at the time, but everyone denied all knowledge of the name, which isn't unusual given that these projects are typically covered by non disclosure agreements. Still, I did manage to find a few scraps of information about the scope of the project, primarily that it was going to be a peripheral and game concept for the 360 and PS3. After a little digging in the Unseen 64 vaults, we discovered that the project managed to get beyond the concept stage and a working food was made, and that at least two games were in the works. In fact, work on the food progressed to the point where mock ups of the final retail packaging were actually made. What's interesting is that the top of the package has the Wii logo, suggesting that the team extended their support across all three major platforms at the time. So, what are the food? Put simply, the FOOB are a set of four dice like controllers that contain a number of sensors which track positional data on each device. Based on some of the footage of the FOOB in action, which we'll get to in a minute, it's likely that a camera device was also used to track the device's location in 3D space. Further details on the precise specifications of the FOOB are missing, however, after all, it never officially existed, so I can't 100% confirm that the camera device was used, but it seems likely. The first game, simply titled Foob, was going to be a Mario Party style group game which took on a very simple, cartoon like aesthetic. There's no footage of this game in action, suggesting it probably didn't get past the conceptual stages, but I would assume that since it shared its name with the device itself, this was probably going to be packaged along with the device, much like Wii Sports was for the original Wii. Work also began on another game titled Quest for the Magic Stones, which was apparently being aimed at fans of the Harry Potter series. Here we see the food being used for text entry on a code wheel. As you can see, the food device was built to allow for analog input by rotating the device forwards and backwards. This was also planned to be used as the main method of navigating through the game menus and the UI. The food were predominantly dice and could be used as such. Sensors inside the foobs would allow them to send data back to the console, telling it what side of the die was facing upwards. This could be used in puzzles like this one. But rolling the dice was necessary to solve a numbers based puzzle. Once the puzzle is solved, players then have to use gestures to magically open the door. Here we see a logic puzzle where the player has to move the red and yellow foobs towards each other in order to complete the challenge. This is why I made the assumption earlier that an external camera is used, as this would require the devices to recognize how close they are from each other. Physics based puzzles were also planned, where players had to alter the rotation of each device in order to control the pulleys and platforms in the puzzle. Again, it's not clear whether the information was based on gyroscopes inside the device itself or whether this was being captured by an external device. As well as the puzzles, Quest for the Magic Stones was also going to have a rhythm section too, which looks like a simplified take on the Guitar Hero formula. Players would have to shake their foob in time with the colored prompts on the rolling sheet of music to complete the challenge. The last two puzzles demoed are again focused on logic and memory tests, both of which seem to utilize the rotational sensors of the foob in order to complete the challenge. So, what happened to the FOOB then? It's likely that, much like Split Shift Racing, the FOOB fell victim to THQ's realignment away from new IPs and physical releases and more towards digital games that bolstered their pre existing IP. THQ Digital Warrington would go on to make Red Faction Battlegrounds and Warhammer 40k Kill Team before the studio was eventually closed in 2011. That's all for the FOOBs and from me. If you like this video, please consider helping us dig up and conserve the fragments of gaming history by visiting our Patreon page listed in the description below. And if you want to learn more about cancelled and unreleased games, head on over to the unseen64.net website.